Hey guys, and welcome to the Chemistry Shack. In this video, we will purify 70% ethyl rubbing alcohol to obtain nearly pure and nearly anhydrous ethanol. 70% ethyl rubbing alcohol can be purchased from most pharmacies or in most supermarkets. It typically contains ethyl alcohol and water denatured with small amounts of acetone, methyl isobutyl ketone, and denatonium benzoate. In this video, we will separate the ethanol from all of these other contaminants to obtain nearly pure ethanol. This separation process is fairly straightforward and gives reasonably high yields, but it does take quite a bit of time, especially if you do it on a large scale. With this method, I was able to obtain about a liter of nearly pure ethanol from 4 bottles of the 70% solution, which came to a total of about $12. The first step is to concentrate the ethanol to about 85%. This can be done with a simple distillation. Charge the round bottom flask with the rubbing alcohol and set up for simple distillation. Make sure you have cold water flowing through the condenser. Heat the flask until liquid begins to distill over at 78.2 degrees Celsius. This will be a mixture of primarily the ethanol and water azeotrope but it will also contain the trace amounts of acetone present. After the first batch of distillate came over, I switched to this setup. I added a Klyzen adapter to the still pot and an addition funnel on top of that. This way, I could allow the ethanol to drain into the boiling flask slowly so that I could run the distillation continually instead of doing multiple individual distillations. I found that this saved a lot of time. After this distillation, I collected about 1.5 liters of what I determined to be 90% ethanol by measuring the density. The impurities at this point are mostly water with a small amount of acetone. In the next step, we will remove most of the water from the ethanol to obtain a nearly anhydrous product. To the ethanol water mixture, add a drying agent like anhydrous magnesium sulfate. After it is added, shake the mixture and let it settle. Once it's all settled, vacuum filter it to retrieve the ethanol. It's okay if it's a bit cloudy in this step. Now I decided to dry my ethanol twice, but this probably wasn't necessary. It will only be necessary if you don't use enough drying agent the first time. How you proceed from here will depend on how pure you want your ethanol to be. It will still contain a small amount of acetone. So if you want to remove this, you can fractionally distill it and discard the acetone distillate that comes over at 56 degrees Celsius. Once the temperature rises above 56 Celsius, all of the acetone has been removed from the ethanol. Now you can set up for simple distillation to distill off the ethanol from any magnesium sulfate that may have dissolved in it. Since my ethanol only contained a few percent acetone, I did not fractionally distill all of it and only distilled about 200 milliliters for demonstration. If you are okay with acetone contamination, you can go straight to the simple distillation and just distill off the ethanol acetone mixture from the magnesium sulfate. In the end, I was left with about one liter of ethanol containing a small amount of acetone contamination. I tested the ethanol for water by adding a few milliliters to a test tube and then adding some anhydrous copper sulfate. You can see by the faint blue color that the ethanol still has some water in it. After measuring the density, I found the ethanol to be 94%. This is likely because I waited several days after drying the ethanol to distill it. In this time, the ethanol absorbed water from the atmosphere and diluted to 94%. However, if you distill right after drying, you should easily be able to get above 98% ethanol. The ethanol was transferred to a 1 liter HDPE bottle for storage. In a future video, I will show how to completely dry ethanol for highly water sensitive reactions. As a final note, this process is intended to produce reagent grade ethanol for use as a solvent or reactant and it is not intended for consumption or topical use. You should never ingest anything prepared in the lab, and even if you were to do this procedure at home with food grade glassware, it's still not recommended to drink the product due to the acetone and small amounts of denatonium benzoate in it. 
Well that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can be notified whenever I release a video. Subscribing is totally free and it's a great way to stay in touch with my latest projects. Also, if you like my videos, make sure to check out the channels Nile Red and Paul Pyro. They both have amazing science videos and deserve many more subscribers than they currently have. And as a final note, I am currently working on the silicon tetrachloride synthesis and should hopefully have that video done in 2-4 to four weeks, so make sure to stay tuned for that.